Hello everybody, my name is Liz and I'd like to welcome you to day three of the Children's Book Show Digital Festival. If you've taken part in our other events, hello again. <laughs> um, it's so wonderful to be here broadcasting into your schools and homes in the week of World Book Day to celebrate the joy of books and reading. So first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the Children book, Children's Book Show does. We choose some of the best authors, illustrators and poets from around the world to perform in theatres across the country, giving children the opportunity to experience the electricity of a live encounter with an artist. We run in-school workshops where children get to work creatively with authors, illustrators and poets in their own classroom and we give away thousands of books to children each year. Although this year has been different and we haven't been able to work in theatres or schools, we have created online projects that have brought the joy of reading to children everywhere. We have really, really missed our theatre performances, so it's especially exciting that we can be here with you today. This afternoon, we'll be listening to the wonderful author and illustrator, Jo Empson. Jo loves to create beautiful, colourful books with depth and meaning, along with a sense of fun and surprise. Her first book, Rabbitiness, was nominated for eight awards and she has gone on to write and illustrate more gorgeous picture books like Little Home Bird, Never Ever and Jungle Jamboree, just to name a few. She's going to be sharing a whole new story with us today, this afternoon, that no one else has seen yet. And there's going to be a draw along. So have your pens and paper ready if you'd like to join in. So during the performance, uh, teachers can write questions for Joe in the ask a question at the bottom of the screen. I can see you've been putting some in there already. Um, and we'll try and get through as many as we can in the time that we have. And finally, I'd like to remind you that the event is being recorded and it will be available for you to watch again on YouTube. So please do subscribe to our channel. And last but not least, I'd like to say a big thank you to Arts Council England for their funding and support, which has helped us make this week's event happen. Although we can't yet be with you in person, we really hope you'll, today, you'll enjoy today's performance. So now, please join me in giving a huge welcome to Jo Empson. Oh, thank you very much, Liz. Oh, and hello, you. everybody. <laughs> oh, it's so lovely to, well, for you to join me here and me join you. And even though um, I can't see you, it doesn't stop my excitement from knowing that you're all there. And uh, and welcome to my studio. And I've um, well, I've tidied it, especially for you. <laughs> Still looks quite uh, quite busy, but it has had a good uh, a good tidy. And so, as Liz said, we're going to have storytelling. We're going to do some draw along, and I'm going to show you a brand new book, top secret project. Um, but what I thought I'd start with is I, I thought I'd start by telling you, uh, we're well, just sort of showing you how I go about making my books because it, it's a question that lots of children ask me, how, you know, how do you go about making your books? And also I thought it might be good to show you because you might want to make your own books. So what I'm going to do is I've got some pictures on the screen for you. So I'm just going to share my screen and I'm going to run through the process with you. So let's have a look. There we are. So hopefully you can all see that. So uh, so these are the books that I've produced so far. And um, as you know, my name is Jo Empson and I'm an author illustrator. And what that means is that I write the words and I draw the pictures for my pitch books. Now, um, not, you know, with, with lots of pitch books, sometimes you have an author who's one person and an illustrator who's another person. And uh, the publisher puts them together and they make a really good team. So even if you're, say you sort of, you love drawing pictures, but you not so sort of, uh, not so good on the story side, or, or you've got a friend who, who comes up with amazing stories, you could sort of work as a team with them too and you could make a little picture book 
uh, between the two of you. Um, and I feel I feel so lucky to do the jobs that I that I do because I've always loved picture books, and um, and I love illustration. So to to marry those together and to do it as a job is just the best thing in the world. So if there's anything that you feel really passionate about and you love doing, if you can turn that into your job, it's an amazing thing. So let's let's have a look. Right, so another uh, good question is lots of people say, um, ask me what comes first, is it, is it the words or is it the drawings? And to be honest with you, it's the idea. The idea is the, the thing that comes before anything. Um, but to think of a good idea <laughs> is, uh, is trickier than it sounds. And if I, I find, if I sort of sit at my desk and I think, right, I've got to think of a a new picture book and I want to think of an amazing idea, something that nobody's ever thought of before um, and nothing happens, absolutely nothing happens. But if I'm relaxing, so if I'm sort of in the bath or, or there's that lovely sort of time when you're half asleep and you're half awake and, uh, and you're really relaxed and then it's almost like a little window opens in your head and ideas come in. And that's where I find my best ideas come when I'm sort of, when I'm not trying to think of an idea, when I'm, I, I guess when I'm daydreaming. So, so daydream is a good thing, <laughs> but don't tell me teachers. So this was one of those, uh, one of those sort of very, very early mornings. So, um, so I'd been asleep and I was just sort of, just waking up and I had the words, um, to a book about a rabbit. So I'd, I'd had the idea that I wanted to do a book about a rabbit. Um, and I woke up really, really early with the words in my head uh, to rabbitiness. And I, luckily I had a, a bit of a, like a, an old envelope or something next to my bed. And I just quickly wrote down all the words. Uh, because sometimes if you go back to sleep, you forget all your good ideas and all your words. So it's a really good idea to take sort of um, to have a notebook with you at all times as well because if you if you're sort of say on a bus and daydreaming out the window you might have a really good idea for a, a story so then you can write write it down if you've got a notebook so this is uh, so these are the words so i had the words to to my story and at the time i didn't have a pet rabbit although i have had uh, pet rabbits in the past so I thought, right, I better go somewhere uh, where there's lots of rabbits. And I can draw them and really get to know the character. So I went to a place called Finkley Farm, which uh, if any of you, if any schools are near Andover, you might know. Um, and it's oh, it's a great place, and they've got lots of different animals there. And I went on a really, really, really cold day, and I drew I watched the rabbits and I drew them from all different positions and I I sort of watched how they um how they washed themselves how they ate um how they hopped around and tried to get a, a real sense of their character so these are some of the sketches and then when I got so cold I couldn't hold my pencil anymore I went home and I looked at my sketches and I did some little inky drawings and these are the inky drawings I did from those sketches and then suddenly a little character starts to appear and it's, it's a really magical thing when a little character appears and you sort of on the page and um, you sort of get to know them so this is Rabbit. So then I was thinking about what um, what environment Rabbit would would live in so I sort of, I imagined him living in a beautiful um, meadow field next to the woods. So I drew in Rabbit's environment. So I had my character and I had the words. So the next thing is um, I make, I always make sort of like a little tiny book so that I can sort of chop out all the the words of the story so I sort of have small chunks on each page and I can work out uh, where all the words and the illustrations go 
throughout the 32 pages. So this is this is the first little book uh, and I'm going to show you how to make your own little books as well. So then you work with um, a publisher and it's a bit like I guess sort of working with your teacher on a, on a story so um, so the publisher wants to help you make it you know the very best book so we sort of go through these little books here and these these are just sort of sketches on some pages so we'll discuss whether you want to make any changes uh, and things like that and then you work with um, a designer and an editor and lots of there's lots of people involved in putting together the final book and then after months and months and months of work um, it goes off to the printer uh, and then you don't hear anything for ages for, for months and months and months and then one day a really really exciting package comes and uh, and the postman comes and he brings a final book so this is my final final book of rabbitiness so um, so I guess we're what would be lovely to do is to read rabbitiness and I'm going to do a few actions at the beginning so uh, let's see if you can join in with the actions as well so this is rabbitiness Rabbits liked doing rabbity things. Rabbit liked hopping. So who can hop? Have we got any good hoppers? You can hop. I might not hop because uh, I might lose my earphones. <laughs> Lots of good hopping. Excellent. Rabbit liked jumping. Can we all jump? Jump as high as a rabbit. Brilliant jumping. Rabbit liked twirling his whiskers. So we twirl our whiskers really long. And Rabbit liked washing his ears. So we're going to wash the back and the fronts of our ears. Rabbit liked burrowing. So taking a big, big hole. And rabbits liked sleeping. <sniffs> Rabbit also liked doing unrabbity things. Now, what do we think unrabbity means? So, I think it's a rabbit that likes doing very unusual things, things that you wouldn't expect a rabbit to do. So, can we guess what rabbits might be doing, which is unrabbity? we think. He liked painting. Have you ever seen a rabbit paint? And making music. <gasps> I wonder if any of you know what that instrument is called. It's a very, it's a very long and difficult word and I'll give you a clue. Uh, lots of people play it in Australia. Let's see if anybody can guess. I'll leave it and I'll see if anybody can guess. This made Rabbit very happy. It made him so happy, all the other rabbits caught his happiness. He filled the woods with colour and music. One day, Rabbit disappeared. The other rabbits were very sad. They couldn't find him anywhere. The woods were quiet and grey. All that rabbit had left was a hole. A deep, dark hole. But down the deep, dark hole, rabbit had left them some gifts. There were lots of things to make colour and music. In time, all the rabbits discovered they liked doing unrabbity things too. This made them think of rabbit, which made them happy.
In fact, it made them so happy. They filled the woods with colour and music once again. And there's Rabbit. Oh, I can see lots of you have um, have worked out, uh, I've got the name of the instrument and it's called a didgeridoo. Well done. <laughs> So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to show you how to make your own book. So, um, so hopefully you've got some paper, but it doesn't matter if you haven't because you can can do this at home later. So, um, oh, let me just show you. I'll just show you my the sort of like the little books uh, that I do. So, so this book <laughs> is tiny. Um, just put it near the screen. That's all right. So this is a book I did for my first tiny little book when I was working out the story for Never Ever. And you'll see all the all the pictures are very, very, very rough, and I've just written the words in as well. So, so you don't have to be neat or anything. Um, and then this was the first book. Let me put it there. Uh which became Little Homebird, but actually started off being called Hitch, and it was a slightly different story as well. So there we are, my little books. Uh, and what's nice about making little books is you can sort of work out where you want the drama in the book, so so where there's going to be a sort of big um, page turn. Uh, so it's and there's normally always 32 pages in a picture book. If you count your books at home, you'll find there's normally about 32 pages. So it's quite difficult to fit a, a story into, into those pages. It sounds like quite a lot, but it's not really. <laughs> so here we are, we've got our piece of paper. And what we're gonna do is, so it's about A4, I'm going to fold it in half. Yeah. And then I'm going to fold it in half again. There we are. And then I'm going to open it up. And you've got your sort of like four creased lines. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the scissors, oops, and we're going to cut along the middle crease so it's very simple to make there we are so now we've got two and then cut down the middle of this one oops so we've got Use two and then cut down the fold again. Oops, there we are. So we've got four pieces of paper the same size. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort of shuffle them together and try and get them as even as possible and then. We're going to fold it oops, in half and, oh, I forgot my stapler. Uh, and then what you do is you put a staple in the middle and there you have your own little book that you can start writing and creating a story. So this has got 12 pages, but if you want to make more, like a bigger book, then you just add add more pages, so it can be as big or small as you like. So I'd love to see if you, if any of you, create your own little books. I'd absolutely love to see them. That would be brilliant. Right. So let's have a look. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to do some more reading. Let's have a look. There we are. 
Okay, hopefully you can all see that now. Ah, right, actually. Uh, I'm just going to sh stop sharing the screen because I wanted to show you some things first. So, as it, so, um, the lovely thing about being uh, in a creative job is you get to work with other creative people as well. So, um, I've got a good friend called Liza Harrison, and she makes the most amazing puppets. So, she's made me lots of puppets. So, here's the the little Never Ever Girl. I want to give her a wave. And she's made all sorts of beautiful puppets, a little home bird puppet and fly. And I've also worked with um, another very creative um, girl called Harriet. And uh, she animated, she did a little animation book trailer for me, which I want to share with you. And it was the most wonderful thing. Seeing your illustrations come to life is just uh, fantastic. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you that now. So let me just share my screen again. Right, there we are. So there we are. So there we are. Uh, hopefully you can all see me now. <laughs> right, so um, so that was Jungle Jamboree, and that was a lovely, um, lovely little animated book trailer. So it's, it's great sort of working with other cre creative people as well. It's, um, it's a lovely thing. So I thought now would be a good time to do some more reading. So I think we're going to read Jungle Jamboree. Deep in the jungle, the beat of the drums spoke of a grand event. A chitter-chatter swept through the treetops, and the word soon spread. A jungle jamboree, tonight at dusk. All creatures welcome, great and small. But who will be the most beautiful of all? Not me, roared the lion. My mane is too dull. Not me, chirped the bird. My legs are too short. Not me, snorted the zebra. My stripes are too boring. Not me, whispered the leopard. My spots are far too spotty. Not me, sighed the hippo. My bottom is too big. I wonder what's for lunch, said the fly, who just flew on by. All the creatures disappeared into the jungle to get ready for the jamboree. All apart from the fly, who happily ate his lunch, enjoying the beautiful view without a worry in the world. Finally, all the creatures were ready, but somehow they didn't quite look themselves. Something had changed. Surely now I will be the most beautiful of all, purred the lion, flicking his feathery mane. Easily me, sang the bird with lovely long bamboo legs. Definitely me, laughed the zebra, giving a colourful twirl. Clearly me, secretly thought the leopard, all spotless and flowery. Ta-da! Off 
obviously me, announced the hippo with his fancy pants. What a beautiful end to the day, said the fly. As the sun grew weary and rested upon the hill, dusk fell over the jungle. It was time for the jungle jamboree. All creatures gathered, great and small, along with the judges to decide who would be crowned the most beautiful of all. But the clouds were not tired and wanted to have some fun. So they whipped up a storm, causing mischief and chaos, blurring away the fancy frills and leaving the creatures themselves once again. Finally, the clouds grew tired and put their mischief to bed. But darkness had fallen upon the jungle. The judges could not see you deserved to be crowned the most beautiful of all. Let me give you all some light, said the fly. Zipping all around, the light of the firefly shone brightly, showing the judges the creature's natural beauty. You all look so beautiful, just as you are, said the judges. But everyone agreed. The firefly's kindness was the most beautiful thing of all. Wonder what's for supper, said the fly, and home he flew. Oh, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um... Now, as you've uh, probably guessed, um, I love animals <laughs> and I love drawing animals. And, uh, well, all of my books have got lots of animals in. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about, uh, how about how I go about sort of drawing a character. And then we're going to do a draw along. Uh, so that's exciting. So, um, so what I do, first of all, is, um, so this is sort of line sketches from, um, from the book Jungle Jamboree. And what I do is I, I do, like with rabbit in this, I, I either go to, you know, to a zoo or a farm or wherever the animal is, um, or I look on YouTube on a video and I do lots of sketches just to try and get to know the sort of characteristics uh, of an animal. So um, how he walks, um, you know, what position he's in, um, how he eats, every, everything. So, so really getting a sense of his character. And then when I've done lots and lots of sketches and I feel I'm sort of really getting to know his movements, um, I then sort of, well, I then look at, uh, look at his characteristics and then decide, you know, what it is I'm going to sort of exaggerate into a character. So for the lion, I wanted him to have this really sort of uh, like wild, messy mane. Um, and I wanted him to be friendly as well. So he's he's got a smiley face on on all these, apart from when he's looking sad. <laughs> so I've got my so I sort of draw sketches of him in all different positions, and then I try different colourways as well. So here are the the colourways. So if um, <laughs> if any of you have got any pets at home, because I've got. Uh, Oh, I've got two pets. I've got a dog and a cat. And this is Wilfred, my dog. Uh, and he's uh, he's a lovely boy. He's gorgeous and likes uh, listening to stories as well. Um, so if you've got pets at home, you could maybe try drawing them. Um, and a good tip is, uh, although sort of Wilfred runs very, very fast when we're out for a walk, he also sleeps a lot so if uh if you're trying to draw your pets you might want to wait until they're sort of feeding or or uh, asleep or you know sort of in a quiet position uh, and then it's a lot easier to draw them so i'm going to stop sharing my screen now we're going to do um a draw along so if you want to get your pencils and paper ready that would be brilliant so i'll just show you what we're going to draw so we're going to draw, we're going to draw the lion, the big roaring lion. Um, 
so that'd be fun. Right, so I'm just going to swap over now. Um, so, oops. Right, so we're all ready. Got your paper, got your names on your paper. So we're going to start. Joe, we can't hear you at the moment. Oh, sorry. I would, sorry, we're going to, let me just stop sharing. Bear with me. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes we have technical hitches. That's all completely normal in this in this uh, day and age, isn't it? So it's fine. Bear with us, everybody. Okay. So right. Let me just. Okay. So I'm just going to share my screen again. Now I had a few technical problems. So let's let's just go go back to. The beginning. Oh, sorry, everybody. Right, let's start again. Oops. Right. Um, okay, so I'm going to put this back to the beginning and we're going to start drawing. So we've got our pencil and paper. And we're going to start in the middle of the page. And we're going to draw an oval, but sort of like an egg shape, going all the way around, but just stopping, so not going all the way around. Then we're going to draw another oval, so like a mirror image. Draw all the way around. So we're making a big wide mouth. And then in the middle, we're going to join the ovals. So we're going to draw a little line with a little sort of a little hump in it. And then like a little little hump bridge, and then join to the other side and that's going to be his tongue so that's the top of his tongue I'm just going to draw his tongue coming down and round and then joining at the top again now we need some big sharp teeth so we're going to draw some triangles at the top so big ones and little ones going all the way around and there's some smaller ones at the bottom. So lots of triangles. So we've got our big mouth. Now we're going to draw his head, but because his, his mouth is really widely open, you'd only see a little bit of his head. So we're going to start off by the where the top tooth is. I'm going to draw uh, like a curve round. So it's almost like a head. So we're just going to start our head off with a curve. And then we're going to draw an ear. And then we're going to follow it round. So following his head round. And then his other ear. And then join his head to his mouth. And because his head is so sort of far back, you just see, you wouldn't see his eyes, you'd only see his nose. So I'm just going to draw a little nose. That's it. And then a little line, draw, sort of 
joining his, his nose and his mouth. And there are a few whiskers. So there we have our big roaring mouth. So we want to give him a big messy mane now. So lots of squiggly lines all the way around. So you're making a big messy mane. All the way around. So it's big bushy mane. Now we're going to do two paws. So line down and then a big curve round to make one paw. And then another big paw. So going all the way around. That's it. So we have our two paws. So I'm just going to try and colour this in quite quickly. So um, you can use felt tip pens, crayons, pencils, but I love using ink because uh, the colour is really strong. So I'm just going to do a pink tongue. So nice bright pink tongue. So I'll just so nice, nice bright colours. I really like using inks because you can you can sort of add water and make all the colours spread as well. So I'm going to do a really, really dark sort of menacing mouth, but I'm just going to be quite careful to not go over the teeth as well. So I'm just going to quickly block in the colour around his teeth. So we want to keep his teeth nice and white as well. So just go a little bit careful. Try and keep the sharpness as well of the triangles. So just block that in. Make it all nice and dark. I'd usually sort of wait uh, for different sections to dry, but because um, otherwise, if you sort of put the colours on too quickly, they they merge in together. But um, that's all right. We'll just quickly quickly do it. And around his teeth, keeping his nice sharp teeth. around his tongue. So just going quite careful. So he's looking, he's looking uh, like a nice roaring lion now. I'm just to make it very dark inside at the top. So it looks even more menacing. I quite like the way the ink spreads as well. So I think we'll do his pink nose now. That's it. Just a little nose. And we'll do his yellow feet first. So we give a little bit of time for the rest of him to dry a bit. So nice big yellow paws. There we are. So we're filling it all in. I'm just going to carefully do his ear and his head. Just try and not merge the colours in together as well, which is tricky when it's all wet as well. So probably kind of 
pencils or felt tips might be easier. There we are. So I'm going to use a really big brush now to do his his mane, his big orange mane. So, so lots of quick brushes. Try and make it as wide as possible. So it gives it lots of energy if you if you do it quite quick. So just filling in all around. Just being quite careful on on those bits which are wet and just around his head. In his ear. There we are. Now just going around the bottom as well. So just a few finishing touches. So we're going to give him some sort of lines all around his mane. So I'm using a stick pen here. So just real quick, quick movements. So just giving him a little bit more detail. It's quite nice with the way the colours bleed in as well. Now we're just going to do some big whiskers. There we are. And a few claws. Now we're nearly finished. There we have our lion. There we are. So oh, I'm so sorry. I had uh, terrible technical problems there. Um, maybe if you want to, if it wasn't uh, clear, we could sort of send you a link to um, to a little sort of lion workshop. So oh, I'm so sorry. But anyway, if you've all drawn some lions, we'd uh, absolutely love to see your pictures. If you wanted to send them into the children's book show, that would be amazing. So. Um, let me have a look. I think we might be having some questions now. Let me just, I'll just share my screen again and just check. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> there it is. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> I guess right. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely share that film um, of the lion drawing if people, you know, would like to do it again. Sorry, it was really tricky. We had a couple of tech, tech problems there, but never mind. Um, let's have some questions. Now, I know that lots of people have been asking uh, questions and I'm going to start with a really nice question for you, Joe, and it's from Langho St. Leonard's School. And they say, did you love drawing when you were in infant school and were oh, you did. good? Oh, I don't know about good. I think my my sister was amazing at drawing. So, she, so I've, got, I've got an older sister um, and she was fantastic at drawing. But I loved drawing. Uh, I loved drawing, colouring in, painting. Um, yeah, I'd, I would quite happily just sit for sort of hours just colouring in. Um, so I've, I've always loved art, always. Yeah. And, and did you think then that you might grow up to be... To, to have a job that might involve art or did you not really think about it no it's funny I don't think I actually um I actually thought it could be a job you know and, and, uh, so I think um finding out it could be was the best thing in the world because uh, it's not really a you know I, I thought these sort of these books just appeared magically I didn't really sort of um think you could do it as a job you know yeah. um, obviously there was authors and illustrators I loved but um so so that was so I didn't really find out you could you know do it as a proper job until I was a lot older yeah <laughs> <laughs> um 
Now, there's quite a lot of questions about animals. So um, I'm definitely going to ask you some questions about animals. So Silver Birch Class at Ealing, they um, they ask you, do all your books have animals in? And why do you write about animals? Yeah, all my books have <laughs> animals in. Um, and why do I write about animals? Um, I just really love animals. I, th I think uh, they're such amazing creatures and we can learn so much from animals. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 think all, I think all my books will always have animals in. Mm. Do no. you have a, one animal that you like to draw the most? Well, uh, I probably have, there's probably sort of two sides to that uh that answer so i love drawing um animals in the cat family i find really interesting so lions tigers uh cats because they have very sort of exaggerated movements you know when they're sort of like crouching down and uh stalking something so i, I love that fact about them uh but my very very favorite animal to draw is wilfred <laughs> of course my dog because he's uh he's so draw drawable he's got um great character and because he hasn't got a lot of fur uh you can see all his lovely muscles and you know lovely sort of lines and shapes to his body so yeah wilf is probably my favorite, favorite and somebody um somebody earlier i noticed in the chat i'm sorry i can't remember who it was um they asked what sort of dog wilfred is ah now so wilfred is a lurcher um with a bit of saluki in him and he's a rescue dog so um so i've had him since he was seven months old Aww. and he runs amazingly fast absolutely uh, like a rocket <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing oh um now sorry um i've asked that question oh yeah year two in haverly hay uh, at Haverley Hay Primary, they ask, how long does it take to write a book? Oh, so just to write a book? Well, write and illustrate a book, okay. I suppose. Um, Both parts, please. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, for me, I find the writing the easier of the two. Um, but it really depends on the book. So um, roughly, I'd say sort of, six months to a year to complete a book so it, it does take quite a long time uh some books like rabbitiness the words came very easily and they hardly changed um so that was that was a very easy book to do in a way um other books i've rewritten lots of drafts like six seven different drafts like um it would sort of like hitch that became a uh, Little Home Bird, um, I probably did about sort of six, seven drafts of that book. So some, sometimes it comes easier than than others. And the la this last book I've uh, just finished, that took, you know, that took a good sort of a good year to work on. I, I feel like I'm quite slow at illustrating, <laughs> but um, you just go at your own pace, don't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think, yeah, I mean, it just, it must just take time. So, yeah. Um, and it must be a very enjoyable thing to do, uh, you know, when it's going well. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. When it's going well, it is, it's great. But there are, uh, I, it's, it's really funny. I don't know whether other illustrators feel like this, but when I've completed a book and it's been a bit of time and then I start a new book and I sort of feel like I've forgotten how to illustrate <laughs> again. And it's really it's sort of, so it feels really, hard at the beginning and I think it's um it's working on the characters I find uh the trickiest I think I think it's mm. sort of um it's just getting to know them and then once you've got into the rhythm of drawing the character things go you know a lot better but it's but you can have sort of I suppose uh you know confidence uh, things where you, where you where you're not sure if you don't you know you're doing it right or not but um but then you get to into the swing of it and it's it's great yeah i love it yeah yeah um and i'd quite like to ask you this question and i think it might be our last one actually um 
because we've got to have your Oh, yeah, story. secret project. Yeah. So, um, but that is from year two in St. Michael's School. And they say, which animal from your books is the hardest to draw? Oh, yes. Now, let me think. Um, uh, oh, let me just have say. Oh, I know, I know. It was uh, the hardest uh, was the hippo. <laughs> Actually, in Jungle Jamboree, <laughs> I I probably drew him about oh about four different types of characters for him. So yeah, I think it was the the hippo. I sort of I struggled with a bit on that one. Yeah, but good question. Great questions. Yeah, really good questions. Really, really brilliant questions. Um, okay. So now, are we going to have your new story? Yes, very exciting. Brilliant. So, I'll see you in a minute then. Yeah, I'll brilliant. Disappear. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen in a minute, but uh, I just wanted to show you how just how new this story is. I literally just finished it, and uh, we've just got a, a proof in. So it's not even a finished book yet. It's it's all sort of uh, held together and um, not a proper book yet. So that's that's how new this story is. So I'm going to share my screen now and I'm going to read Tiny Blue. Right, so here we are, top secret. Shh, don't tell anyone. So Tiny Blue, I love you. Tiny Blue was only little, but his head was filled with very big questions. He thought his papa was very wise and so must have the answers to everything. How old is the ocean? Tiny Blue asked his papa. It's older than, sorry, it's older than you or me, Tiny Blue, said Papa. It's even older than our great, 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 great grandparents. Wow, that's very old, thought Tiny Blue. He peered into the water. A tiny blue penguin with big feet and little wings looked back at him. Papa, he asked. Why can't I fly? Will I learn some day? Papa smiled. Penguins aren't, aren't born to fly, Tiny Blue. Our wings are too small. But we were born to swim. Woo! So that's why I have such big feet, cried Tiny Blue. Papa? Yes, Tiny Blue? What are those wibbly wobbly things? Above their heads, hundreds of creatures bobbed and swayed, lighting up the, the ocean like colourful fairy lights. They're jellyfish, Tiny Blue. Wow, gasped Tiny Blue. Now Tiny Blue and Papa plunged deep, deep down towards the sleeping coral and the swaying sweet sea grass. All around them were creatures of every size and colour. Tiny Blue's head was full of curiosity. Papa? Yes, Tiny Blue? What is the biggest fish in the ocean? Is it true that Daddy Seahorses have babies? Do, fish live, do starfish live in the sky as well as the sea? Papa, is there sand on the moon? That's a lot of questions, Tiny Blue, said Papa. Let's see. The largest fish is the whale shark. Look, it's very big and scary, gasped Tiny Blue. It may be very big, but whale sharks are gentle giants, said Papa. But these seals aren't as friendly as they look. They'd like to eat penguins for lunch. Quick, swim as fast as you can, Tiny Blue, and no more questions. Papa? Yes, Tiny Blue? Will you always keep me safe? I will always keep you safe, Tiny Blue, said Papa. There's no question about that. 
As the sun set, Tiny Blue and his papa swam to the shore. Papa? asked Tiny Blue. How do you always know the way home? I follow the same path every time, Tiny Blue. One day I will teach you, and then you will know it forever. How long is forever, Papa? asked Tiny Blue. Papa smiled. Aren't you tired yet? Tiny Blue and his papa settled down in their nest in the soft sand. Papa, do you know the answer to everything? Nobody in the world knows the answer to everything, said Papa. Some questions are so big we will never know the answer. Now, good night, Tiny Blue. I love you. Papa? Yes, Tiny Blue? What is love? Oh, Tiny Blue, that's a very big question. It's one of life's greatest mysteries. But if it's a mystery, whispered Tiny Blue, then how do you know you love me? Tiny Blue's papa cuddled him tight. I just do, Tiny Blue. I just do. So that was Tiny Blue. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoyed enjoyed. Um, the book and um, oh, it won't be out for a while. It's coming out in January next year. So that's that's really exciting. Um, and uh, it's very interesting doing books uh, for different sort of subjects. You, when you sort of do research, you learn a, a lot of things. And this book, I, I learned a lot of interesting facts. So I thought it'd be quite nice to play a tiny blue game and then maybe you might learn some things too. Or you might know all the answers already. So we're going we're gonna to play Tiny Blue game. So some of the curious questions Tiny Blue asked his papa. So it's a true or false game. So, um, so I'm going to read you the question and then I'm going to give you five seconds to think about uh, whether you think it's true or false. Uh, and then after five seconds, I want you to shout out true or false and we'll see who's right. Is it true that daddy seahorses have babies? So do we think it's true or false? Five, four, three, two, one. True. The daddy seahorse daddy carries babies in a pouch, just like a kangaroo. Ready for the next question? Is it true that starfish live in the sky as well as the sea? Now, what do you think? Going to have a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. True or false? False. The stars in the sky are very different. They are bundles of energy that glow and twinkle and you can even wish upon. So on to question number three now. Oh gosh, we're getting lots of lots of good answers. Is it true there is sand on the moon? What do we think? Ready for the countdown? Five, four, three, two, one. True. There is something very similar. It's called moon dust. So the last question now. Here's Tiny Blue's last question. Is it true an octopus has eight arms? Five, four, three, two, one. What do we think? False. An octopus has six arms and two legs. <laughs> so that was a bit of a tricky question. Right, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. So how did we all do? Oh, I can see in the chat, you yeah, very good. That's amazing. Well, I certainly didn't know about the octopus having legs, two legs and six arms. I was... Neither you know, did I until I did the book. <laughs> I was completely wrong there. <laughs> well, that was absolutely lovely, Joe. I really enjoyed that hour. And I hope that everybody at school and at home really enjoyed it as well. Um, so thank you very much. 
Uh, just before we go, I'd just like to remind everyone that Joe's made a really lovely creative workshop video and it's on our website and she shows you how to make a, a lovely little bird that you can hang up in your classrooms or at home and decorate it, cut it out. It's a really nice activity. So if you'd like to do that and send us photos or pictures of your birds, we would love to see them. And then, you know, we might put some on our website as well. Um, and just one final reminder that we are a charity and if you can donate in any way, then that would be absolutely marvellous and it helps us to put on more brilliant events like this. Um, so that's it really from us. So thank you again, Joe Empson. Oh, you are amazing you. and we hope to see you again. And um, everybody, thanks for joining. It's been a brilliant week of events and look out for our theatre performances this autumn keep an eye on our social media and website and you might be able to come and see joe in a theater somewhere so oh and lots of other of our artists as well so um yeah that's it goodbye and oh. thank you very oh. much please join me thank you all thank you all for your lovely messages as well